Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Gate 7 International. I'm your host, Costa. I'm joined by co-host, Martial. What a frigging week it's been. The emotional roller coaster at Olympiagos continues. Olympiagos have beaten Balk 3-1 tonight at Stadio Karaiskaiki. Three loss come back from hell. Martial, I was just saying to you before we came on, I don't know if I can take it anymore. I think I've experienced every emotion a human being can face in ju in just one game, because the, the start of the game was very interesting. Like was a lot of pressure, some situation. I was like, okay, the team understood. Well, what's the plan tonight? How we have to play against Pauk? And then the the goal happens. Own goal, own goals like that, and I I I, I was thinking that everything was going to be chaotic, you know, like even losing 2-0, 3-0 while trying to, to get back into the, the scoreboard. And But I've, I've said it before the the game, it's to, to be played with prideness, you know, and I think the players tonight showed that they have massive prideness to play for Olympiacos and to fight for the title until the end. And that's the the only thing I will keep in mind. Apart from the victory, of course. Absolutely. I mean, it's... Uh, as I said, there's no other way to describe this season other than just the the most ridiculous emotional roller coaster. I I don't think I've ever experienced anything like it since, ever, since I started watching Olympiacos. Nothing like... This season's like nothing I can remember. I mean, there have been tight yeah, you no know, tight uh, contests for the title in the past. Um, you think back to um, you know Olympiacos and Ajax in the early kind of two thousands, um, the season where it went down to the wire in Rizupoli as well. But those were seasons where we had good teams like this. Uh, but I mean, it, we had to come to April. We had to get to April fifth to really feel what you know a win in a derby is like at the Karaiskaki Stadium in the league so there was we we made a big win against Ajax that was in the cup this is the first big win in a derby game in the league and you do it after you've gone one nil down in a game <clears throat> where Anigo takes takes charge as a caretaker manager it, 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 and, you know, the, the comments are going off in the chat and, um, you know, unbelievable yeah. comeback says Lagis Gavalas shows the massive difference in individual quality that we have from the others. Yeah. Indeed. I, I, just look at the subs because I've said it, I think sometimes that having five subs, it's a, a massive uh, advantage for Olympiacos, of course, in Greece because... Olympiacos has the best squad, the best players. And I was kind of worried because when I saw Anigo changing three players like that, I was like, okay, five subs is good, but sometimes you don't have to use them, all of them, I mean. But the fact is, Masuras has played in Europe. He has played for the Greek national team. El Arabi, man, is not to be presented anymore. And even Vruzai have, have some, has some international experience, so... Yeah, when you comp when you compare to Pauk's bench, you understand that the Olympiakos coach, no matter who he is, uh, will have a lot of solution on the bench, and that it it has to be how advantage. Uh, I agree with the comment because even against Panathinaikos, the difference in terms of quality is just very very big, and we have to benefit from that. It wasn't possible at the beginning of the season because the squad was too big and players was was going were going from the team to the bench to the bench from outside the mission and then get back to the to the team and it's not it's not happening anymore and it has to it has to be our main advantage to finish the the season. Yeah. And we'll we'll get to the Panathinaikos game eventually and talk about the situation in the league. Mm. 
Um, before we do that, guys, um, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're joining for the first time, we're Gate 7 International, your number one English source for all things Olympiacos. We are an international podcast bringing together Olympiacos fans from all over the world, creating new ones as well. If you're a Greek listener and you want to type something in the chat in Greek, feel free to do so. Perfectly fine. Um, subscribe if you'd like to keep keep in contact. Uh, new content coming out all the time. <clears throat> our blogs, our interviews on the channel. We go live after pretty much every game. Um, and here we are again. I mean, you know, we talked just a few days ago. We were here on Monday night after Mitchell and Olympiacos parted ways. And, you know, I asked you, what can we expect from Jose Inigo? Um, what did you think like today? Um, I mean, you already saw some some changes in the in the squad. Pape Cisse was back in the squad for the first time. And then in the starting lineup, Mathieu Valbuena, I think, was a surprise to quite, you know, to quite a few. And yeah. uh and, and uh, Yanim Villa starting despite reports that he he had a niggly injury even after coming on against Aris at the weekend. Usainu Bar started the game and finished the game as well. So what did you what did you make of it? Well, uh, as expected, it did not make made a revolution in terms of tactics because there there is just no room for that, and he's not he's not known for for being someone that I don't know will use a three center back defense or stuff like that. But I think it it gave the keys to the players, and he probably uh, I don't know how to say that, but probably Mitchell was taking the responsibility for the team because he's more coach like has compared to Anigo. But maybe Anigo gave back this responsibility to the players because we have uh, big players in the squad and it's up to them to push this team toward the title. And maybe Anigo was he, he was there during the whole season because he was in the locker room. He was there during away games. He was there in Europe. He was there when we lost. He was there when we won some games. So he knows what's happening. He knows probably exactly on which players he can rely on, uh, which players are um, ready to take responsibilities, uh, stuff like that. Because, And that's probably why Valbuena started tonight, because he's the kind of guy that loves that. He loves the pressure. He's, he, he loves when he has to be the leader of the team and Okay, he did not give an assist tonight. He did not score, but probably it helps players like Fortunis, for example, to be more in the shadow, maybe to 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 take back some pressure. And even Bakambu, I know, I feel like he's is kind of the guy, a guy that loves pressure. During the past weeks, he has been very good, and the goal he scored tonight is the kind of goal that I don't know, it's like. Primal Arabi would have scored maybe like a striker that is not afraid to attempt a shot like that. Confidence, and, yeah, confidence. And Anigo probably will give confidence to this team. And he, he, I think he will just use what Michel did before, and he was he will give that confidence to the players. And but maybe the difference between him and Michel is that Anigo is used to uh, work in a club in which he has the supporters, the fans against him. Because in Marseille, it ended up like like this for him. He, got, he was hated by the fans, and I think he just don't don't care. He used is is used to that, and I, I don't think I don't really think this team is to be coached by someone from now. You know, it's just seven games to to play, if I'm correct. And do, yep, do, do, they, need, do they really need a coach? I don't think so. I mean, if if you have to play in Leoforos. Uh, a, a live or die game. You don't really need a coach to to prepare it. I guess it, it reminds me a little bit of some seasons where where Kokalis used to sack the manager that was there for the season, and he'd end the season with like Pep Segura or Bozit, you know, Bandovic, or you know, and, you know, these these coaches that some of them never coached in their life again, and. 
you know, others went on to do nothing in their careers. They won championships because the squads had quality, had talented players. And I, I think I think most Olympiacos would Olympiacos fans would agree that we have enough talent, enough quality in the squad to beat the other sides. And I think Labro mentioned this the other day, but it's really like the fact that we're still in it after all the mistakes that have been made, it goes to show like the, the level of the others, even though like I, I agree, I stick by my statement on the weekend that Balk, Panathinaikos, Aik, they they improved on last season, in my in my view, but the level is still is still very low, and I think again it is really <clears throat> testament that we're we're still in it, and you know I I've put the question in in the chat one more time, um, fans, do you believe that we can win the league? And I'm seeing already, like you know, cast your vote, guys. If you're if you're following live now, yes or no? Do you think we can win the league? Just to get an idea here, some now it's 85% of you believe yes, we can win the league. Um, keep the comments coming in the chat, guys. This is your show as well. I'm gonna go and see uh, Labro. If you're still awake, man, log in and. Join us. Uh, and also, Strat, yes, say it. Something that matters the, the most for me is that I, I've said it to you when at half time I, I was saying, okay, Pauk is winning 1 0. They're going to make that this game dirty. They will stop playing football. They will like try to win time to, to win falls. And they did it. And for once, uh, we did not fail into uh, into the trap. We did not make stupid falls. We did not have a red card. We did not concede a PK. And it's massive improvement for this team because I think this is what why I fear the most the game against Powell because Luchescu really knows how to to make Olympiacos weak in terms of psychology. Every time he wounds the team with... Uh, a shitty goal like the Vukovic on goal back in time or the home goal today. And it's funny to see that sometimes his plan is not working. And that's why I ju just don't agree with you when you say Pauk improved. Pauk is probably the team that did not improve that much because they have young players, but the yeah. Lucius could plan. They don't have any plan B when it, when it does not work against a big team. Because Aik in Tumba, they never stopped trying to score. They never, they never fell into that trap. And tonight we did it. And I, I, I've said it. I think I remember the the phase in which uh, Fortunis got elbowed against uh, Panathinaikos. Yeah. And I was like, okay, there was no reaction from the the players. And I think it was. It, it looks like it was like month ago now. Because look at the team. You have more patience in that. And I saw Valbuena in the first half, like complaining about Kotarski winning time already. Those are small details that make a difference for me. And we will we will need that in Leoforos because Panathinaikos probably is going to use that uh, as they did against the last time we went in Leoforos. And we fall into that trap with the Avila situation. So... I have to say, though, going into that game against Panathinaikos, I like the fact that we're behind them. Uh, they they have the pressure going into the game. They're top of, I mean, they're top, and uh, they're playing at home. They'll have their fans on top of them, and I think we're going into this game with the biggest confidence boost we could obviously get. Um, turning a game around that, flipping it on its head in the second half. And scoring three goals when it could have been five or six, really, in all in all fairness today. Um, so I I do fancy our chances, and I I agree with you, but there seemed to be that extra fire from the players today that we haven't really seen all season. Like you know, going like you said, like the small details, like going up to the ref and getting getting up in people's faces, being aggressive. Um, yeah. Is it oh, oh. 
is it a reaction to what's happened like with the with the other manager um they, they've shown <clears throat> like they've shown character and and you said as well at the, the start of the show today and he goes really picked the players with character to go out there on on the field yeah and uh, i i do believe that this title is to be with with with, char with character as you said it because I, I would I would have to check that, but I'm how many players from the Panathinaikos squad have already won a title? How many from Ajax? Just look at the squad we have. We have a lot of a lot of players that all, that knows how to win a, a title, and at at some point, probably it will have to make a difference. Because when you when you get into that uh, into that situation when you play a uh, crucial game. In Leoforos, in Karaiskakis, sometimes legs can be shaky. And we are sure when, when you see Valbuena, you know that his leg won't be shaky if he has to play in Tumba or in Leoforos. But what about, I don't know, some players from Panathinaikos or some, some Aik players? Imagine, imagine if Aya Sofia is packed with fans and players get lost with the pressure. The pressure will get to them, you reckon? Yeah, and you, you're really right because it's better to be not to be first, uh, because we the one that chased the team, not the 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 one that exactly is, that is chased. I don't know how to say that. But. Yeah, no, that's right. It's like you you're in a situation where, yeah, you're you're chasing them and they feel you coming, they feel you coming, and there's fear. And this is a really good comment from from Andrea. <laughs> Olympiacos today reminded me of the bad guy in the horror movies that survives every time. Great game from the team. That's a really good comment. Um, that's it. It's like you just every time there have been so many times this season where we think there's no way, like we just we've completely fucked it. And then something happens and you're like optimistic again, and then you're down again, and today we're up again. It, and that's again that I go back to my roller coaster analogy all the time. And, and I start to see some messages about, you know, an ego should stay next season, etc. And, uh, you know, George Kouros is asking us uh, thoughts on the manager staying until the end of the season, go from there, we'll find someone and sign ASAP in order to prep the team over summer and focus on next season. Um, I'm, I'm going to say very simply, I think stick with Anigo until the end of the season. Uh, but we should be, I imagine the club is already looking for the replacement manager for, for next season. Uh, I said it on the last show on Monday that whether we, you know, whether we finish second is going to be super important because I think that will mean we, we can attract a different level of manager. No, you know, the manager that we'd be talking to knows we have a Champions League qualifying spot is different. So I don't expect any any news on a manager for some time. I think we'll see out the rest of the season with an ego. But already you see names popping up. Uh, Cambiasso, uh, David Fuster was was in Athens for the Panathinaikos game as well. Could be a Cambiasso-Fuster duo. Um, Bakar, the the Haifa manager, was you know in the press. That's my view on it. Um, Marshall, an ego for the rest of the season? Yes, because I don't think that you can find someone in late in at the beginning of April that is able to understand what's going on in the team, inside the team, outside the team, in the country, in the league. I mean, Anigo has been there since September. So uh, I've said it on the show last time that I was wondering why no one from the under-19 team got the job. But I, I, I guess it makes sense that it's Anigo that leads that team because it, it has been there since the beginning. So he knows exactly what going, what went on, what's the the mood of the players and... It has to be an advantage that someone like Cambiaso does not have at the moment. And I'm not even I'm not even talking about manager qualities, uh, tactics or stuff like that. But you, you just can't throw someone 
in that because if someone has to lose the title, it has to be an ego. It's just, it's what you said though. It's that he knows the situation. He knows where he is. He knows the players. Um, and I think, you know, Valbuena and El Arabi, it's their last season, man. But El Arabi has got another year, but I don't know. I don't think he's going to stay another season. I think he, he might move off to, to play in the Emirates or something. Um, but you, you know, if anyone's going to get the best out of those two players who are at the end of their careers, is this guy. Like Anigo is essentially the guy, the guy behind bringing Valbuena to Greece in the first place, El Arabi as well, if I'm not mistaken. So he's he's the right guy to motivate them. And they're yeah, you know, such it's... important figures in the team. They're senior players, they're experienced players with, you know, bags of quality. They've played at the highest level, which you know, you said as well that they they've won championships in different leagues and you need those players to turn up and this is the right guy to do the job and guide us exactly. to the end of the season and get the best out of those players and you know e even Cisse Cisse look look very comfortable after not playing for such a long time today he slotted in really well at the yeah. back yeah yeah, so no, yeah. Um... it's 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 it's. I don't know to say that, but I'm pretty sure that someone like Valbuena is the kind of guy that every day he wakes up thinking about the title, like every training, asking for more for players, like saying they can do it. Like someone like Envila, when he, he came back into that team, you just know that the, the midfield with uh, with Huang is. And from another world, when you compare to the Palatinaikos midfield, for example, even even the Ike midfield, because they, they do have good players, but we have such an, a short amount of amount of games to play. So I'm, I'm, I, sometimes I'm, I feel that I'm more worried about Volos that will come and park the bus in Kareskakis than than a game in Leoforos, because obviously the the result will matter equally, but. I don't think that this team needs to be motivated anymore. Like they look like that they are on a mission, and uh, it, it's just so bad that we we draw against Aris because otherwise it would have been the perfect start. But we haven't. We've lost one derby in the league this season. Yeah, against Balk. And the like the big, you know, the games where we've dropped points have been against the. Uh, like Atromitos, Pazianena, Volos, Asteras. Is those is those games that we've really dropped yeah, the yeah. points, yeah? And we could be we could be first if we had not dropped points. Too many. But did you say too twenty? Many. No, too no. many. Too many. <laughs> no, but yeah. just look this summer. I remember when I I, I, I was in Greece, like the draw in Tripoli, that was probably yeah. the shittiest game we have played so far. The draw against Volos was the De La Fuentes miss at the end of the game. The Obviously, the both both draws against uh, Van Martinaikos, the one against Janina, the, ones against, the one against Aris. We, yeah. we we are not that far from Martin's standard if we in terms of points I mean because two draw, two losses only in April in the league like it, it feels like we we we've lost ten times in the league already. Can I ask you a question? Like, do, do you agree that today is the best game we've played all season from oh, beginning to end? The season has been very long, but yeah. But, but honestly, I'm trying to think. Yeah, like, yeah. Yes, because because, you, the, 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 because uh, uh, the the beginning of the game was very interesting, uh, with a lot of pressing, pressing, and I I didn't see the team doing that before many times, and also the fact that we bounced back on that game uh, says that it, it could be one of the best game of the season. Yes. Probably with Aya Sofia one, but it's it's just more about the result than the, the display. So, yeah, certainly in the league, like I, I I think without without a shadow of a doubt for me, is the best game we've played in the league. Like we really went into the game 
pressing Bauk and creating chances the first 12 minutes. We could have been could have been two goals, I think, the first 12 minutes. And then they levelled the game off and we were texting each other. And I told you, this game smells like Martins' first game against Bauk when we were destroying them. And then Vukovic scores that own goal. And yeah, that's the way the first half went. They scored a goal from one chance that they created. And the game ended like uh, with Olympiakos having 15 shots on goal, seven on target. And Balk had four, four shots, four shots on target in total. And there were quite a lot of, you know, actions that were called back for offside that didn't didn't count towards the stats at the end as well. And possession was, I think, in the end, 49% we had, 51% they had. And, you know, it was... Uh, I think you know the Kadai Skagi was obviously loving it as well. Like the, the emotion of going into the going into half time and there were some boos, I think, at half time going going into into the locker room one nil down, and then you know Anigo has to shake them up a little bit and say, "Okay, guys, like go out there and keep it going. Essentially, keep creating chances, and one of them is going to go in." And it took it took a special goal to to bring it back and Bakambu scored an absolute worldie from outside the box, something we haven't seen him do all season, but it's something that a player with confidence does as soon as, you know, he just received the ball on the turn and it, I don't think he even looked, he just looked down at the ball and curled it and he knew where it was going and, you know, the keeper could do nothing about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's, also, I've been struggling to find links tonight, and it's it's the, the kind of night that you will remember because I've been struggling to find links, and the one I found like just minutes before the the back on boost goal, and I just saw the the goal before on Twitter done on my link, and I wasn't expecting back on boost to score some uh, some a, a screamer like that. I mean, we are not used to see back on boost doing that, and. But it, 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 it brings me to the point that we, ha we will have to talk about. It's uh, Reabshuk. Yes. Reabshuk since, I don't know if it's, if it's since Marcelo is out, since Ramon came. I don't know. Probably Ramon came. Uh, it, it's just different. Like, I think he, it looks like something has been unlocked in him. Like mentally, he's going forward. He's, going, he's doing good crosses. Uh, giving assist to. We said that after the Iris game, didn't we? We said like he looked like the um, yeah. the break. The break did him some good. I, I, the the thing is, I don't think it's. I don't think we're seeing an improved Reabchuk in terms of what we know he can do. It's just he's he's performing at you know that level that he can. I think, and the, the problem has been that he's been run into the ground. He's played so many games. He plays for Moldova every international break, and this time he didn't go. He didn't travel. I don't think he like went. You know, like he didn't go to Paris or like we saw lots of players traveling during the break. And I, I think you, you see the difference. Is Ramon really that much better? I, we we don't know, but you see the aggression, right? That the Oleg plays with, and his crossing wasn't bad. Like he's involved, he's involved at least. And I think he started a bit slow today, but he definitely like grew into the game. And I I appreciated his aggression at least, like trying to win the ball high up the field and. You know, creating dangerous situations from you know pressing high up and making good tackles. He's he's got an assist today too. Like it's just you know he he's he's run a lot actually. He carried the ball forward a lot for the goal, and uh, just plays that nice pass into to Bakambu and you know Bakambu scores a fantastic goal. We already said. Yeah. So so yeah, props, props to Oleg Grabchuk, and it, it's it's. Good to see because uh, every time that a player 
is struggling is in Olympia because that the only way for him is to keep struggling until he's out of the team because he just can't struggle anymore. Like, and on on the, on the same topic, it's good to see Masura scoring because he needed that goal so bad. Uh, we all know the season he's been having until now, like missing a lot of chances, uh, being very average and on a lot of games and. I do feel happy for him because he is a good guy. Obviously, he loves the club. He knows what it represents to play for Olympiacos. And it's good to, to see him score tonight. Especially in a bottom goal, too. Yeah. Um, shout out to DR. Don't know if that's DR for doctor. But thank you so much, my friend, for the donation. And he says, doesn't give me the option to donate seven euros. So he's rounding it up. Thank you so much. What you're going to do, keep it up. We love you and we need your Olympiacos coverage and analysis. Thank you so much, my friend, for the donation. Every little bit helps um, towards covering our costs, having the, uh, having the, uh, you know, we have to pay for all this stuff out of whatever we whatever little we make on on youtube to to pay stream yard to uh to pay for y scout all the wonderful you know stats that we bring on our on our socials and onto the show so every little bit helps so thank you thank you so much for the donation that's really really appreciated I'll go back to to the comments. Fetanos, we haven't seen you for for a while, mate. Uh, Fetanos from Finland says best thing that's happened to Oleg was the arrival of Ramon. Clearly, healthy competition makes a difference. Since we were just talking about the man himself, uh, George says that's the worst penalty I've ever seen. But at this point, all I care about is UCL spots. Fair dues, George. Um, Maria. Maria Lemoni says, I don't fear Bao, we can win for sure. Uh, Vasilis Anadiotis thinks that Anigo should stay as head coach. Okay. Uh, there's a question. Yeah, there's quite a few questions about this on the weekend as well from, from Maria about Andreas Doi. Do we know something if he was on Sunday's game instead of Rezos, we, would, we wouldn't have conceded the goal. I think you, you mean to say. So there's a lot of rumors going about um, surrounding his contract. So just to be clear, uh, Andreas Doi has a contract for another year. The talks have commenced for an, a renewal. He hasn't, he hasn't agreed anything. Well, the two sides haven't agreed anything yet for a new contract. But um, we've also been informed that it is um you know it's also a bit of an attitude issue so it's not just it's not just contract talks this is normal in football especially for a young player with potential there's probably other other managers or agents telling him you know we can bring you this we can bring you that you the kid probably wants to play abroad at some point. He has another year left on his contract. There's no reason for him to rush. But, uh, you know, young players as well, you need to manage them properly. Um, psychologically, you know, he's come out of nowhere and become a first team player. Um, you know, he, he, he needs to be managed. Now, whether or not I think, you know, he should have played instead of Vretos, or that he's third in the pecking order after Socrates and Bar. I agree. Uh, I don't understand why he wasn't on the bench. There are a lot of things that aren't easy to explain this season. Cisse, for example, where's Cisse been? Yeah. And I know, I know Marshall, you think that Cisse Bar is the best uh, defensive partnership we have. And th the game ended like that today. But, 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 but where are they even tested? Were they even tested today? No, but the 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 the, the CC bar pairs pair like uh, shows how how chaotic was the season for Olympiacos because 
both of them should have been so sold before, especially Cisse, because he, he won the African Cup before. He was probably the MVP last season. Uh, I remember the game. I think it was in, in Crete. He scored a brace and he almost tore his ACL and stayed on the pitch. And he, he, yeah. he somehow stayed in the club and the issue is that Ba was probably injured for a lot of, for a long time and he, he had to be sidelined for like like four months. So the pair could not play together. And we started the season with Socrates and Manolas too. And Manolas was supposed to play. And the situation was very really difficult because for me, the best centre back of the team right now is he said that it's the is the one that plays in a World Cup. Of, okay, he's not a starter for Senegal, but he's in a team that plays the World Cup. He's probably the one that has more chances to go abroad, even not uh, in the big club. Uh, and this pair has proven in the past that uh, it can work together. Of course, they can be scary, they can make mistakes, they can uh, allow goals. They did it in the past, they will probably do it in the future. But it's the most. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to say that, but uh, they have chemistry, natural chemistry. And I, I thought at the beginning that Socrates and and Doi has that, but the issue is that and Doi is much more midfielder, and Socrates. Well, I think is. To me, just my opinion, but it, it, it would be the fourth choice for the, the centre back. Like even Endoy would go behind him, because Socrates to, tonight is like he, he can't even uh, uh, stay with the the, the, the striker. He's making falls like the, the the yellow card he received like was a big fall, and is injured from time to time. Like every two or three weeks, he got an injury. So, Cisse and the. the the debate is resolved for tonight because probably Socrates won't be available for Sunday. And Cisse too is uh, to be put in the category of players like, for example, Valbuena. Like they crave for a title. They probably think about it every day. They want to finish probably the the chapter in Olympiacos with a title, and they deserve it. Like Cisse gave so many things for Olympiacos. Uh, I won't list them tonight because it would take me like half an hour, but. He deserves to be someone that wins the title, and also, uh, I, I think we said it on the on, on our chat, but he can score an header from time to time. And when the Red Sox came in against Aris, and we had some corners at the end, and you know that Red Sox won't be the guy that will score an header because he's not that tall and he does not smell it. I don't know how to say that, but he does he does not yeah. smell it offensively. Compared to yeah. to Cisse, and maybe Socrates too. Yeah, I, I mean, when it comes to scoring goals from set pieces, you, you know, Cisse is your man out of your your centre backs, absolutely. And you know, to to this to this point, Spiros is asking a question: Do we go to Leofordos with a Cisse bar partnership? And he says one hundred percent. And I, yes. I, I agree too. I think it's. Yes. Clear, and also I, I see a question about Valbuena, and I just want to highlight something that I've said it. I've said on on, on the first half, uh, the way Valbuena crosses uh, straight to the striker, and I just remember like Bakambu situation in which Kotarski uh, made the tremendous save. I just I only see Valbuena in the squad, even. Even James can do this proper thing, like cr to cross in a in an area in which the defender and the goalkeeper cannot touch the ball. And he was doing it with El Arabi during like three seasons before. And he knows exactly when he has to cross. He knows exactly where he can put the ball. And I think it's the kind of situation that can unlock a game, even in Leoforos or in Tumba. Of course, he, he can't play 90 minutes, but I'm, I'm not so sure with from what I saw tonight that is it's up to Valbuena to be on the bench uh, in Leo Foros. But Anigo, surely we, we will have choice to make. 
to make. Sorry. Yeah, I mean that's a good. It's a good question, and look, I I think I think BL was underwhelming today. Uh, for me, like he had that chance in the first minute of the game, the ball dropped to him outside the box, yeah. and he curled it first time. And I think that was his best moment during the game. And then he was just, you know, I, I've said it a million times before. I think it's not his best position, but but okay, man. Like he's been playing there all season. Um, I know he doesn't love it, but but you need you need more from from him. We need more from him. And yeah. And, and you know, we had this conversation earlier about Josh Bowler, and you were saying like. You know, people were saying that this guy would be useful at Olympiacos and that he was the solution. And I told you, people only even thought that because all the others were so bad, were not performing this season. So like, who's, you know, for, for Tunis, for, for Tunis has started out on the left today for Valbuena to come into the team. Um, and I don't, I think it, it was okay in the first half. With Valbuena and Fortunis, they, 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 it was, it was, it wasn't too much. But like sometimes when Hammers and Fortunis are on the pitch together, I think that they, they try to do, they try to occupy some of the same spaces. They both want the ball. Like Valbuena will run. Like Valbuena will make some runs into space, or he'll be, he's, he's more mobile than Hammers. So there's more spacing on the pitch. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Valbuena be a starter moving forward. But like you said, he can't play. He can't play ninety minutes. But you know, play him. Play him from from the start and bring Masuras on as an impact player. You know that Masuras smells smells those actions where the ball's in the box, like 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 he did today. He was just in a position to capitalize on an error and that's the kind of thing that he's he's good at and even if you're having a bad season like that instinct to be in the right place at the right time and score that kind of goal it's something that you have to have yeah is it's not something that you know you, you've really got to have it in you and he does and have that also from the the french point of view like Valbuena is aided in France because he has this ability to win falls uh, when it matters the most I would say because for example when you it, it it's there is strong chances sorry that we will be for example leading one nil in Leoforos and you need someone that like Valbuena that knows uh, how to fail on the ground to win a fall and to piss the, the opponent off that so so badly that he could uh, lose the, his mind and go out of this out, out out of this game. Sorry, and I just see the comment about Beal, and this is the kind of thing that worries me in Beal is that he's the one that got the red card in Leo for against against Panathinaikos, if I'm correct. He got the red card, and yeah, I got a red card. Yeah, it, it was against Panathinaikos. Second yellow. So, yeah, exactly because he made a what what is like a stupid tackle. It was against Ike. It was against Ike in Hagia Sophia. Yes, yes, correct. In the in the cup, yeah. And this is the kind of details I was thinking about. Uh, Biel's finish too is, has been very poor recently. But sometimes you see that is not. I don't think I don't know how to say that, but is. I, yeah, I think the word is soft. The the word of luck is is soft, and I tend to agree with that. And. But also at the same time, he's able to shoot. Like the the first minute shot he had was very impressive. So it is the kind of player that can score from any time, from any situation, any position. So it's not really it's not really easy if you if you if you would be an ego like to choose who's the player you will you will let on the bench between Bill, uh, Fortunis, Valbuena, and James, and including Masuras because he has scored because. I think it will be in the equation, but it's we've up got, to Jose. To... <laughs> yeah, we've got a question from Costa Llanos, uh, but before we before we get back to the question, um, like and subscribe, guys. I think more than 50 of you in the chat, but we still haven't reached 
oh, we have reached 50 likes. But if you've just joined and you haven't hit the like button, hit the like button. It doesn't cost you anything. It really helps to get the channel and this live episode out to more Olympiacos fans. Subscribe if you're joining for the first time. More content coming your way. Gate 7 International, your number one English source for all things Olympiacos. Thank you to our sponsors too, uh, Piraeus International and BetUS. Got information below on how you can make money using our promo code GATE7INTL at betus.com.pa. Use the code GATE7INTL and you can get 125% boost on your first deposit. So you put $100 or 100 euro, you can get 125 extra on your first deposit by using the code GATE7INTL. Don't forget to bet responsibly. Now, uh, I want to go back to that comment from from Costa. Costa Lianos was live in the Galaiskagi Stadium today, providing live commentary for the channel. Uh, Questions for Martial. What's going to be more embarrassing for Baog, Panathinaikos, Aik? If we win the title with Anigo... As manager or Labros as manager? Uh, it's funny because from the French p- point of view, obviously Anigo is done in football since a lot of a lot of time. So people were, were talking about Olympiacos choosing Mitchell that have failed massively in Marseille and then appointing Anigo after him. That is I, I won't say he's a failure for Marseille fan, but he represents what went badly for Marseille, that having someone from the city in the club, like doing uh, every role and also with, uh, I wouldn't say that, but connections with bad people, involving bad people inside the club and stuff like that. So a lot of OM fans do not like Anigo because he represents uh, what went badly for the club. So from the French part of view, if you lose the title to someone that hasn't been a coach since years and took the team like eight games before the end, obviously is massive humiliation because uh, Lucescu is uh, the, the Pauk coach since a lot of years. Almeida, too, Almeida came with a strong resume. Jovanovic is a whole coach in the, the system. So if Hanigo, Hanigo is able to win that, that title, and, but I would say if Olympiacos wins the title after the season we have been seeing until now, that is, it's massive humiliation for the rest of Greek football. Because basically, we, we gave them the title. And uh, probably if Aik did the same beginning as Panathinaikos did, we would not be in the contention for the title anymore because they do, lo- they do, lo- they do look better. Uh, than Panathinaikos, but sometimes they drop points from time to time. So, yeah, if we win that, I mean, it's the if we win that, it means that the experience of winning title is the fact, it's the thing that uh, keep the dynamic on. I don't know to say that, but some a lot of people ask me when I go abroad, like, why you support Olympiacos because they win the title easily every year. It's it's uh. It's boring, but I keep saying like winning a title is not that easy, even in Olympiacos. It requires so many things, and same applies for a lot of of players in, in the Greek football because you see the power player that won the, the league, uh, the invincible. Like they did nothing after that because it yeah. takes from you so many energy to win the title to not drop points in. Uh, complicated pitches and stuff like that. But in the Olympiacos, we already have those players. They know how to do that. And they know how to face uh, injustice this season because we have faced a lot of injustice uh, to face, uh, I don't want to say that, to face failures and stuff like that, much more than any other team in the Greek League. So it has to pay at some, at some point. It's very intense. Like you, Olympiacos, we know Olympiacos is expected to win every game, and then you know the feeling of a draw is like a loss every time. That's very, it's a very intense feeling, probably, especially for the foreign players that come in. That, that you know, it takes them some they come in and they understand very quickly, 
like a Canos or like a David Fuster, but then some others they you know it takes longer and some of them never understand. They never they never can tap into the mentality. But um more comments coming in. It's been a it's been a good night. Let's just say it. Like we're all happy tonight. Um Teo85 is asking, do you think Valbuena should be starting against Panathinaikos? I think yes. For me, would you change the lineup from tonight? No. Uh, uh, Bar. I'd go Cisse yeah. Bar probably at the back. Yeah, but I wouldn't change it otherwise. Um hardcore soccer jerseys. Hi guys, he says Dimitris from Adelaide, Australia. Big up my Australian crew. What time is it in Australia? It's nearly it's nearly eight o'clock in the morning. Galimera, good morning to you guys from Australia. If you're joining, great results. So happy for the team, supporters, and the club. Keep up the fantastic podcast. Thank you, Dimitri. Thanks very much. And the doctor is back. I'm going to call you doctor from now on. I hope we can hold on to Huang and Canos in the summer. Huang could easily attract a large bid, while my understanding is that we do not outright own Canos yet. So, no, Canos is on loan without option. Uh, I think Canos, Canos's contract is up, but they have an option to extend it at Brentford. Uh, there was a picture today of like Canos's family, like all wearing Olympiacos shirts. I think I saw that somewhere. So I think I think he really likes it here. Yeah. I think he really likes it at Olympiagos. And is what we said in the scout report. For those of you who haven't seen the scout report, go and check out Ari's deep dive. There's an episode we did with um with a Sky Sports reporter that follows Brentford as well. We talked about Ganos. And we all like we all got that sentiment that this is a player that wears his heart on his sleeve is David Fuster type kind of player. And I think we, we've, we've seen that. Haven't we? Uh, say it again. Sorry. No, I, I said like Canos is a David Fuster kind yeah, of player. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's, that's interesting because that's the, Apart from his football quality, that looks really interesting. That the football high cue he has is also something that uh, we've been lacking in the team in terms of transfer. I would say because someone that is able to adapt that quickly and to understand in which club he plays, in which context he is, and even even because he he, he has faced the most horrible thing that losing his mother. And even with that, he was able to, to I don't know, to, 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 to mold into the Olympiacos uh, world. He, he gelled. He gelled with the club yeah. and like the team, the other players. And if you compare uh, Canos to the, a lot of players we have brought in Olympiacos, it's visible from the very first moment that he would be, he, he would be the kind of guy that will be loved equally from Olympiacos fan and uh, Brentford fan. It, it's no surprise that people yeah. from Brentford love him so much because he's, he's, he's basically a good human being at first and he has a high IQ in terms of football. I'm, I'm not speaking about IQ general, but in football IQ. Um, it shows because when you compare to, I don't know, uh, Bruma, of course, Onyekuru, uh, <laughs> yeah. A lot of people we brought in this team, De La Fuente, maybe. You you know that that th those players, from many reasons, they won't fit in Olympiacos. There is very few chances that those players would be loved by the fan. And Canos, it, yeah, Canos will be loved as Fuster was loved. And even if he's doing a bad game, you know he will give one hundred percent. And he won't show off on the social networks and stuff like that. And I think people are attached to that because when you lose, you don't want someone to go to the barber and stuff like that. It, it, it can look like details, but I, I don't think it is. No, I think well, I think one of the important things that you said was that like he seems a, a good human being, like a, a family family lad. Yeah, and it's no. 
it's no surprise like how much he was loved by the Brentford fans. And I, I was at the Banathanai Goz game where we drew nil nil, and he missed a few like big chances that game. But I remember, I think it was uh, yeah after his mother had passed, and he came off the pitch and like the the, the reception that he got from fans as he was walking round to get back to the dugout after he was subbed off. You, you could see it, like the appreciation from the fans. And he hadn't really like introduced himself properly to show what he can do. And it's so sad. Like he, he was showing that against Aris on the weekends, like he was nutmegging players and just running at people being very direct and he offered he offered this threat on the weekend that we just haven't seen all season from any of our wingers and it's so unfortunate that you know he he went out on socials and said it's going to be difficult for him to play again this season and then you know do you is it a risk at the end of the season to try and sign him anyway without i i, I don't know i don't Given that it's only, you know, it's it's not a torn ligament in the end, uh, is it a risk? Like, I know Ari, I don't know if Ari's listening, but Ari, I think you said that once you damage your knee like that, getting an ACL afterwards is quite common. I, I don't know. Um, I, I would love to see Canos play for Olympiagos. Like, not only, like, I think he has he's a good player, but he has the right mentality. So I would love to see him uh stay on next season. Uh, a lot of people would agree with you because uh yeah, it, yeah, it's a shame he got injured at a very bad moment because it's the kind of player that could steal the show during the the summer, you know. I mean the the qualifiers during the summer because we need players like like that. I think it does. It does not need so many times to be ready in terms of physique because he's not old and he's coming a, a, a decent season. And yeah, it's bad he got he got injured in the knee because you you don't really know with with, with what can be the future that about with someone that got injured in the knee. Like it, it can make the knee weak after that. I don't know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There's another. There's another person. I know we're, we're, we're approaching the hour mark, and we said we wouldn't go long. <laughs> but um, who, who, somebody was saying, okay, like his uh, Huang looks spent. Yeah, he he looked he looked tired, <clears throat> but he still did his job. Uh, so Envila is a veteran. Kasami's at Atromido's level, and Samaseki looks like he landed from another planet. That worries me for the. That worries me most for the game against Banathanai Goz. Okay, so yeah, they, they have very little time to recover. They play again on Sunday. Uh, Banathanai Goz too. Like their players, their players are playing the same the same schedule as we are. So um this thing about M Villa, because you know, uh Doctor is saying M Villa is absolutely vital at DM. When he's out, we suffer in the back big time. But we do so, need a yeah. replacement as soon as possible. That's for sure, a proper one, not another Samaseku. Uh, and you know, this is something we were talking about during the game, wasn't it? Like, just how important he is when he's on the pitch. Yeah, just just look at the the. I, I just remember that the beginning of the game, he he made like two or three one touch one touch pace pass uh, in front of the Pauks area and. I think I, I'm I'm pretty sure he's frustrated some sometime that he's not playing with not not with better player but playing with a team for example that would be coached with Corberan in the ideal world like <laughs> a team that has strong principle uh, a base basis that is not moving uh, a, a strong defense and if you throw Ambila in that I think he would enjoy playing so much in teams like that because. He, he, he loves the game. Like, of course, every player loves the game, but he loves that pass, you know, one touch passes to make the game faster when he can. And it, it, it's one of the first time I see him 
doing it during the season because for many reasons we did not we, we weren't able to have some dynamic in the team. But when you surround him, for example, with Valbuena, because they, they get to play very easily each other. And I think it's it's Valbuena's main quality that he he gives confidence to the player around him. And Envila, when, when he walked back in that team tonight, you saw the difference with Kasami and Samaseku because well, we, we knew that before, but it, 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 it's no surprise, but uh, it, it's just crucial for Olympiacos. And I think and, and, it, it will be important next season, probably not that much crucial. It depends on who is coming to the to the club, but it's it's hundred percent sure that Olympiacos is not able to find a player like Envila, especially if you lose Huang, you need to to keep uh, Envila. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I think I think there are two things. So, so his contract's up. Uh, for me, like you said, it's very difficult to find a player with those qualities. Even though he he is getting on, I think he'll turn thirty three next season. If I'm not mistaken, but I I would like to see him stay again. I think it's very if if the if the alternative is someone like Milivojevic, I I don't really I don't really I wouldn't make that trade. I would like to keep him Villa. I think that his partnership with with Huang is has improved slightly as well, like in terms of balance. And positioning on the pitch, it's gotten better because I think we were very, very prone to, to receiving counterattacks. But the, the overall balance of the team looks looks better recently, even when we press, even when we press higher up the field. Um, I think the fact that Hammers isn't playing has contributed to that as well. I think that's a big factor that when not a lot not really talking about a lot to a, to an extent, the fact that he's been injured for me, I don't know if I'd go as far as saying it's a blessing in disguise, but we, we can't yeah. play. We can't press when Hammers is on the pitch. And sometimes I, I think, I don't know to say that, but it's, I won't say it's obvious, but, the 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 uh, I don't say that in English, but the, the sense of the his destiny is not to renew with Olympiacos. I would say he came and we saw that he has tremendous. James. Well, yeah, James. Yeah, yeah. I mean, James. Sorry. Uh, you you know he has tremendous quality. We saw that, but if we're honest, there is no future with a player like James in the team. When, when you just look at the Europa League teams just look at even the conference league teams i don't see a single team that plays with someone like james and is and that went further the the group the group stage football is evolving like very quickly and unfortunately even marcelo he went he went back to brazil and he did not play one game yet so i think it's 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 time to move on. That the 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 I don't know the opportunity for Olympiacos is big. Like a lot of players are out of contract. I think Socrates is out of contract too, and I would rather promote I don't know Chrysopoulos or someone as a fourth centre back or even Bagalianis. I don't care, but some players have to, to leave, and if they leave with the title, it will be nice. And but I, I'm not sure James would be will be even Besiktas. I'm not sure Besiktas or Galatasaray would send, sign him. I'm not so sure. I'm sure that's a conversation we'll be having again soon. Uh, like he's saying, uh, Silla and Karibdis, do we have to have a veteran be it in Villa or Milivojevic as defensive midfield? We'd be investing in players like Dabo or Fadiga. Uh, I, you know, you, you and I have. Both strong feelings about this. Oh, it has to be Mbila over Milivojevic. I mean, I, I love that... Milivojevic, but comebacks turn to be disaster for Olympiakos at true. first. 
And, and Villa is playing back-to-back -back games. I mean, okay, he got injured a few times this season. And I think people, a lot of people forget that he was out for the first game in Europa League in Nantes. And I think it kind of changed the whole season because I, I was in that game with the Buchalakis Kunde midfield. And it was one of the ugliest games from Olympiakos midfielders since a lot of time. And it, it changes a lot of things, but... And Villa is coming for, from three full seasons, if I'm correct, with Olympiacos. So reliable. Is reliable. Yeah. And I don't I don't agree with the comparison so much. Like I I like Dabo and Fadiga are players that play further up the pitch than M Villa or or Milivojevic. And I think you know there's a place in the squad for one of the two of those players. Probably they'll be fighting or competing against each other for a place in the squad next season. Or in any case, I would like to see them uh, compete. Yes. Uh, Yanis Spinos says, I disagree with Lagis. He's not competent at Premier League level. He's played in the Championship most of his career. Ah, OK. I think you're, he's talking about um, Ganos. About Ganos. He's played in the championship most of his career. Forest already have high quality. Yeah, but he, he, he might be it might he, he might be someone that Forest bought before learning learning to to us. It, it wouldn't be surprising if we discovered that. Yeah, I, I mean Brentford made a statement. I think about his uh, about his contract as well. I, I think it's a little bit far fetched. And yeah, they do have. They do have a lot of quality in those positions. Shall we? Shall we do our man of the match uh, and, yeah. and call it a night? So we have uh, man of the match. If you haven't voted already, you can do so live on YouTube. Uh, Bakambu has sixty-eight percent of the votes, four percent for Envilla, nine percent for Tunis, and nineteen percent uh, Oleg Reabchuk. Marshall, who's your man of the match today? Just before that, I would say that we got an elite referee tonight, if I'm correct. Yes. And I don't think anyone will complain about the refereeing tonight because I said it to you when, uh, I think it was Zivkovic, he got a yellow card at the very beginning of the second half because he made a stupid fall in midfield and the, the referee, which is probably one of the best French referee. Mm -hmm. Just gave him a red, uh, a yellow card straight away because he needed to punish uh, that that stupid fall. And and it, I think it's it feels good to have referees like that. Of course, I won't go into that debate about elite referees, but when you have a, a very good referee that comes to Greece, you see the the difference. And going into the man of the match, well, I would say Rapchuk because not being 100% objective, because I think he deserved it. Uh, he, Some love for Oleg from Martial. No, yeah. I, with, with Oleg, you know, I would always remember the... I think it was I think it was the summer when we went past... Uh, I think it was Limassol or stuff like that. He uploaded on Instagram a video of, of his family watching the... PK shutouts with Valbuena scoring the last one and in his mother started crying. And since then, I'm not very comfortable with critics about Oleg because I, I just know that there is some people around him that will be facing that. So I think he deserves to be praised when he, when he's, when he deserves to be. And tonight he has to be praised. So I'm sure he will be criticized very soon when he deserves Again. to be criticized. So Yeah. Uh, fair dues and uh, coach's grade for you. Well, I would give any good an A because it was his first, and in El Arabi and Masura scored, and his choice were proven right. So he's, he's given a A, an A tonight. Up to him to to have another one on Sunday. Absolutely. Uh, I agree with you. I'll, I'll give him an A as well. I think uh, it, it was funny. I was listening to Costa, Costa Liano's live commentary. And when uh, when Anigo took took Bakambu off, he was like, oh, no, that's not the right move. Uh, we need goals. It's like, 
fair dues. Uh, but but you're right. Like in the end, I thought he he intervened during the game at the right uh, you know during the right moments. I think he made the right subs, and he was proven right in the end. Bakambu, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Masuda's getting on the score sheet, and okay, El Arabi scoring a penalty, uh, shoddy. Penenka that didn't hit the back of the net, but at least it crossed the line. Um, so, so yeah, <laughs> no fair dues to, to an ego. I thought it was a bold lineup as well, um, putting putting Valbuena in uh, into the team. Uh, my man of the match because you yeah. because you <clears throat> voted the day after I'm going to vote Bakambu, just because I I think like he spearheaded the attack, made lots of runs. Okay, he was called on offside quite a few times but you know he he set he set the wheel in motion getting us back into the game with that equalizer just for the 60th minute and uh, it was a it was a beautiful goal uh, otherwise uh, i fully agree with you about about oleg uh, the amount of the amount of not even criticism just like the amount of bad things that you read about him like some of it's really sickening and doesn't deserve that. Like for reasons you mentioned too. Like is, I think he he doesn't he doesn't ever cheat. Like he doesn't ever hide. Um, but 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 okay. I think every I think people people understand where where I'm going with this. Um, okay. And just to look at your votes again. A so sixty eight percent of you have voted uh, Bakambu as your as your man of the match. Uh, Rabchuk is coming in at second with with twenty percent of the votes. So I think all of you really appreciated the uh, the goal in particular in, in the, from Bakambu. And I have a question about that that probably will haunt you during the night. But what oh, what would what would the season would have looked like if Bakambu like came in August? Like be included in the European list instead of Wijo. And oh my because God. Bak Bakambu he needed like one month maybe to get back in shape with Olympiacos because even in Marseille, he came back straight from China to Marseille and he was struggling physically. And I think since since the 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 break for the World Cup, he has been very effective. Um is I, I I've told you uh, when he came to Olympiacos, it is is the kind of striker that was able to score more than ten goals in a, during one season of Europa League. Like he's the kind of striker that does not come regularly in Greece unless they are 20, 35, like Cardoso and stuff like that. But he he knows how to score, and he will probably be around twenty goals uh, during at the end of the season, and. He could have been like 30 because he wasted so many situations, but it is the kind of player that makes me optimistic for the summer because he will be ready when it will be up to Olympiacos to play. And he will probably be uh, like the um, Piero, the striker from Haifa we faced last summer. That was very, like, he was good, of course, but it was. Powerful because he was more ready than the rest of the of the players on the pitch, physically. I mean, and Bakambu probably would be one of those players because I do hope like we will have the first leg. Usually, is against a smaller opponent, and they don't have players like Bakambu. So that's the kind of because he will be there in the summer. I guess he has, he has a contract until twenty twenty five. Okay, so you, you you said you asked me a question that will haunt me, but I'm gonna answer you. I'm gonna answer with a question that will maybe haunt you <laughs> when you go to bed. Do you think, like, I mean, you, you're you're a journalist in France. For those that that don't know, is Bakambu attracting interest from France? Do you know something, or do you think that they must be watching him? And long term, uh, he, he obviously doesn't want to stay too yeah. long. Like th their clubs watching him, and he scored more than fifteen goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think the the, the thing that probably will uh, be a, a struggle for him is that when he went back from China to Marseille, he was the highest wage of Marseille, 
and the the wage he was he is getting in Olympiacos, for example, right now. I don't know it exactly, but. There isn't so many clubs in France that can offer that to uh, Bakambu because obviously he won't go to Paris. Uh, he won't go back to Marseille. I'm, I'm, I don't sure, I'm not sure he will, he will go to Lyon, for example. So maybe Nice could be the kind of club that could attract him. Maybe Lens, for example, if they, went, if they go to European football, but they took Openda in Belgian league because they do a lot of scouting. And I don't really think that they will spend money on Bakambu because you can't sell Bakambu after that. So yeah. um, I, I think it will attract interest in France, but uh, I don't know if he can go back to that. I, I don't really know because it's a strange case. He's a very talented striker, probably one of the most talented strikers we have had in the last years. He's, he's, he got back into the national team. They will fight yeah. for... And it, it, it is something to have in mind yeah. because... They are fighting for a spot in the next African Cup that will be played in January. So if he stays in Olympiacos, uh, he, he could he could go to the African Cup. Do you know if it was an Anigo signing? Was he behind uh, this one? Do you think? I, I I assume so. Yeah, because he's the kind of he's the one that convinced player to come from for to play for Olympiacos. So from France and from Marseille yeah. as well. Yeah. And no, but but, but I don't back on blue. I don't really know exactly where he can end up because he's a starter, a starter streak, striker. I mean, he left Marseille because he wasn't starting games, and because yeah. he had the navy contract. But if he leaves Olympiacos, I guess it will be to go back to a team in which is the main striker. So probably Turkey. Maybe he could go back to Turkey because he went there before and he has a a good name there. But. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe in Spain. I, I don't see him going back to Spain. I don't know to play for Getafe or, or clubs like that. You know. I think he like he's probably he's probably enjoying playing for a team that plays for like to win trophies and yeah. I hope I hope he sticks around. I do hope he sticks around. I'm 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 starting to like him yeah. more and more the more I see Look him at, play. The finish he had uh, in the the solo goal he had in the first half was was very good. Like, but yeah, yeah, El Arabi can't do that anymore because he's not moving that fast. Yeah. But he like Kataski made a really good save on yeah. one of Albuena's crosses as well. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, you yeah, know so... that that kind of striker is pricey on the market. So when you have one, you have to to keep it. and it, it will keep getting better with the with with games. He's growing on me. I think he's growing on the Olympiacos uh, fan base as well. Uh, Outlawed Jorge Bakambu should stay and be our first striker. Look at the first. Yeah, look at the first goal today. Wonderful guys. Um, yeah. Thanks very much for sticking with us. It's past midnight. We've gone on for over an hour. Marshall and I said we'd uh, we'd do a short one. Marshall, thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on. No, you're welcome. Excellent stuff. Uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen, for tonight. Um, thanks for thanks for watching the show. We're Gate Seven International, your number one English source for all things Olympiacos. Don't forget to like this episode. Uh, hit the thumbs up. It doesn't cost you anything. Subscribe if you're joining for the first time. Um, we welcome fans from from all over the world. Uh, we're approaching three thousand subs on on YouTube. Tickers going up. Uh, help us to get to three thousand. There'll be another giveaway at three thousand. And I think Labro Labro promised a, a special uh, rant episode for those of you that love uh, Labro's rants. That's uh, unavoidable. Wonderful stuff. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And we'll be back again. It doesn't stop, ladies and gentlemen. Olympiacos, Panathinaikos. On the weekend, we play away at Leoforo. So we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back on Sunday for post-match. Until then, enjoy the rest of your night, uh, wherever you are in the world. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.